In several videos, we will explore some classic methods used in finance, starting with event studies. In this video, we will cover the main ideas. So what is an event study? Well, an event study uncovers an event's effect on a firm's value. To be precise, value refers to the value of equity of a firm. Hence, we assume that we can observe a share price. This is important as unlisted companies are a lot harder to value. Event studies exploit the information efficiency of stock markets. This means that new information, which becomes public, is quickly priced into the market. To conduct an event study, we follow these steps. First, we need to specify the event, for instance, a decision or an exogenous shock. This includes determining the event date, which I denote T star. Then we observe share prices before and after the event date T star. Third, we determine stock returns. You might wonder why we will work with stock returns instead of share prices. I covered some of the underlying reasons in my video on simulating share prices. There is more to say about stationarity, which I discuss in my applied time series course. You find a link to this course um, in the description of the video and on the channel pages. So here I explore issues around stationarity, which are related to taking first differences, so working with stock returns instead of share prices. By the way, I'm also working on an updated course, which I will publish on Udemy. At the moment, I have one course on Udemy, which focuses on getting started with Starter. This is a total beginner's course. So check this out. Um, again, link is in the description and on the channel pages. Then we need to understand the normal or expected behavior of stock returns. Any deviation from the normal return is the abnormal return, which is a measure of the market response. We require an estimation and event window to estimate normal and abnormal returns. Finally, we test whether the abnormal return is different from zero. Put differently, is the market response captured by the abnormal return significant? In addition, it is common to aggregate abnormal returns over time and across firms. What kind of event can we explore? The majority of empirical papers assess firms' decisions, including mergers and acquisitions, which refers to M&A announcement returns changes in capital structure, dividend policy, and earnings announcements, just to name a few. Moreover, we can also explore exogenous events or shocks, such as policy changes, extreme weather events, and country risk measures. Of course, we must be careful to ensure we can determine the event date precisely. It is possible to handle several events, assuming that they are independent of one another. To establish the normal return, we need an estimation window. It is common to select a period of 90, 120 or 180 days prior to the event. It is also advisable to have a gap between the event and the estimation window to ensure that the anticipation of an event does not influence our estimation of the normal return. I have seen studies that combine two estimation periods, one before and one after the event. Event windows tend to be short and centered around the event date T star. The most common choice refers to plus minus five days around the event date. Shorter windows, plus minus one day, are common in more recent studies. Long-term event studies have been conducted with very extended 
event windows. But confounding events might interfere with the estimation of the market response. It is quite important to understand that we assume that stock returns follow a multivariate normal distribution with mean vector mu and covariance matrix sigma. RT refers to a column vector. It is common that we use bold in print or we underline when we use um, a whiteboard. Now I follow the notation in Campbell Law McKinley on page 154. I covered this classic book in a previous video. So RT refers to a column vector of n securities. So here we have n securities in n rows and we have one column. So it's an n times one vector. In finance it's um, usually the convention to start with a column vector. Then basically we assume that this vector of stock returns has a normal distribution, a multivariate normal, where the mean vector determines the expected values and sigma is the covariance matrix. And we also note that the distribution is IID, which refers to identically and independently distributed. Now this implies that knowledge about today's stock return does not permit any predictability of future returns. Sadly. Have in mind that normality excludes the possibility of so-called fat tails. In reality, stock returns tend to exhibit more extreme observations. But again, have in mind that's for our model of normal returns. So under normal conditions, we would expect this type of behavior. Moreover, note the difference between calendar time, denoted t, and event time, which refers to t star. The constant mean return model, or CMR in short, is often attributed to Masoulis 1980. But Campbell Law and McKinley on page 154 do not refer to Masoulis 1980. When you actually have a look at the paper, you notice that the term constant mean return model is not mentioned in the paper at all. Masoulis instead uses the term comparison period returns. Furthermore, the original idea was covered in Masoulis 1978, the PhD thesis. So this is why it always pays off to read classic papers and not just cite them. So the constant mean return model simply assumes that returns evolve according to a constant expected value. And the additional error term has the expected value of zero and a constant variance. Note that the variance is constant over time. So it refers to sigma epsilon i. It doesn't change over time. But the variance can differ between stocks i. In addition, stock returns can be correlated as captured by the covariance matrix. The CMR is simple, but the market model tends to be the standard approach in the literature. It is derived from the capital as a pricing model, which refers to a one-factor model. Stock returns are related to the market return, denoted RMT. And again, you can see that the coefficients are stock-specific, but constant over time. One would expect a smaller error variance because of the additional exploratory variable, the market return. But the performance is usually not much better in my experience. And market portfolios are not always easy to find, in particular in emerging markets. Now we covered the basics, more theory will follow in the next video. I will see you there.